One of man's basic needs is to take a shot at creating his own dwelling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Life Pod is a, a 14 foot long by eight foot wide living contraption. So this is my contribution to an arena of housing where I'm saying, oh no, you can do more with even less. Here we have the bedroom. This is really a half of a full-size mattress. There's three leafs attached to this couch, if you will. And then this is the kitchen, and you know, we've got a camping stove, propane. We have a small sink. So here we've got a uh, 33 inch wide whopping shower stall with a 19 inch basin. And if I have to use the restroom, it, it's right here. So. so it's the lightest 115 square feet of living on, on the planet. We've got an eight cylinder car there, but you could pull this with a six cylinder sedan or truck the envelope of space that it takes up is driven by the maximum width of a vehicle, which is eight feet wide on most highways in America. And then the length comes from a full-size mattress plus a 33-inch shower plus a 24-inch kitchen counter, which is next to a compost toilet. So when you add up all those widths of everything that you need in there and you throw a couple of two frequency Buckminster Fuller domes onto this 10-sided decagon. You end up with 14 foot of length. So to go down the road, how do you prep it? <laughs> oh, you mean now? Yeah. Oh, it's ready. There's no, uh, there's no process other than putting the hatch door on. What most people don't realize is when they go to buy a 300 square foot tiny home, they weigh up to 12,000, 13,000 pounds. So you've got to go out and buy a $60,000 truck to pull your tiny home and it sort of defeats the whole purpose. It'd be cheaper to go, to go buy a $30,000 house that's falling apart and make it energy renewable than it would be to buy a, a tiny home and a giant truck. How you doing? How's it going? Everybody, everybody just stares at the thing and it's that Steve Martin, what the hell is that? And a lot of the older folks recognize Buckminster Fuller design uh, right away from the, the geodesic dome, which is kind of neat. They say, you know, Bucky would be proud. The sphere and the dome represent the least amount of coefficient of drag. So as the vehicle moves through the air <laughs> down the road, all the air is displaced even more than the most aerodynamic recreational vehicle, which is the Airstream, which I call a box with rounded corners. This goes one step further toward nature, uh, approximating the sphere with this 2V dome. And there's, you know, there's the American equivalent that costs $80,000 for three times more space. And quite frankly, people buy those things and then they sit in their driveway until they sell it at, you know, pennies on the dollar. So this is just enough living space and, you know, you can get into it affordably. So, you can pull it with any car. You can pull it with any car. I would recommend, you know, it probably would go better with a six cylinder at least. We've, um, we've had this up to 55 miles an hour on the highway. Because of the shape, it really doesn't tax the engine. The idea is that this, you could, you could really take this anywhere. 
I mean. Yeah, so this could be a recreational vehicle for a hunter or a fisherman. Could be a, a bug out shelter for people who really want to disconnect entirely from the web. You want to go out to the desert or up to the mountains or out to the ocean. For millennials, uh, they don't have a lot of cash and this gives them the chance to get into a recreational vehicle. If we lease these, we probably could lease these for, you know, two sixty nine a month or something. So for the price of an automobile, you, you get a living space. Suppose you're an application developer, a code writer, and you get a job at Google and there's people sleeping in cars now who are getting these jobs because they can't afford you know the apartments and they don't know where where to begin you don't have three thousand dollars for a studio apartment if you're pulling a life pod behind the the toyota camry that your parents gave you for a graduation gift that's 10 years old you've got enough resources to bring your dorm room with you until you find a job in three months or so. You can even shower, make a meal, you know, make coffee or do computing or whatever you need to right from the parking lot. So that why not bring home with you? So I'm gonna take the screen door off here. It's the only the only screen door in America that's got a 36 degree bend right in the middle. Right. This is the bedroom. There's actually a honeycomb storage unit behind the bed here, very much like a honeybee would make eight, eight inch widths of cardboard and put them together and attach them to each other and created structure. This is an Italian 0 0.65 gallon per minute shower, mm -hmm. um, fully adjustable. If I, you know, wanted to take a shower, I don't really have to orient myself any, you know. So it's pretty comfortable. All right, so you fit. So yeah. you, 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 and I'm six foot two, so this is about a six foot three, six foot four headroom. Basically, yeah. the shower is 33 inches wide, 19 inches deep. So it, you know, I'm, I'm up in the 95th percentile as far as size and I fit comfortably in here and that was a big criteria for us was you know we didn't want pe people to have to scrunch in and then it was interesting you know making a shower wall with these 30 36 degree angles of this decagon and then there's a compost toilet which really is it actually uses the the, the five gallon container from the adhesive that we used on the roof so total reuse of everything. We, we, we reversed engineered the whole thing from the toilet seat backwards. And it was interesting to examine, well, how wide does a toilet booth have to be, you know, at which was like 24 inches. So on the inside you have six foot four headroom and the outside dimension is eight feet all the way around. And then for the kitchen counter, the wallpaper is from uh, an architectural drawing for a supermarket produce section. We have a small sink and you know we've got a camping stove, microwave oven. It's open? It's kind of sticky. Okay. I think it's because of the heat. Let's see. There you go. Hey, yeah, yeah. There you go. Great. Oh, there's even some popcorn in here. Ah. Is it wired? It's wired, yeah. So everything is 120 AC current in this unit. It could be converted to 12 volt DC as mm -hmm. well. If we wanted to put solar panels on here, we could throw two 250 watt solar panels and have enough electricity for a TV, Wi-Fi, and the microwave and anything you could think of. Down below, we have a nine gallon hot water heater on demand. And then behind that, there's a 20 gallon hot water heater. So you could hook this up to your house hose and have hot water for probably three, four days if you were disconnected. Or if you pull into an RV site, there's a tap or a feed on the side. So the hot water comes in from the outer skin in the front of the pod along the wall and then gets distributed here to the hot and cold for the shower. And it's right in the back of my medicine cabinet, which is yet to be finished. Okay. It feeds the sink, hot and cold water, and it feeds the shower head. 
uh, for hot and cold. What I'm kind of proud of is structurally speaking, this unit only uses two by twos for structure. This is the building block of my framework. These cost $1.44 each, and I probably used 240 of these two by twos. So to make the surface, this is quarter inch Luon. This is plywood made up of three layers of material, and this is the lightest building material that's out there. It's usually used for subflooring. A lot of people would argue that it's not robust enough for construction, but the geodesic design creates strength where there is not strength conventionally, so it allowed me to put together ultralight solutions. What we have here is a pentagon, which is made of five triangles. Now, these triangles have a very deliberate dimension. If I know the width of my vehicle, which in this case is eight feet, if I divide that by two, I get the radius of four feet. That's 48 inches. If I multiply that 48 inches by 0.618, which is a lot like the golden ratio of 1.618, which we find in nature. If I make one triangle, which is 0.547 times that 48 inches mm -hmm. by 0.618 times that 48 inches, and I put five of them together to make a pentagon, if we scale that up, then I have this pentagon right here, one here, there's one pentagon here. There's one right in the middle. There's one here. And there's one here and one in the bottom. So six pentagons all together. So what we're doing here is we're using triangles to approximate a sphere. And the sphere or the water droplet is the most efficient shape in nature. This is the least amount of weight divided into the most robust structure. So all we're doing is we're trying to approximate the water droplet of nature. And that's because nature is 100% efficient and lovely and elegant and simple, and it's taking up the least amount of space. This all began two years ago with the geodesic houseboat, which was 10 feet wide by 19 feet long. And that was the same kind of geodesic dome made of two by twos with eight inch round hubs so all I did was fasten the two by twos to the hubs. And this took five weeks to build basically a floating picnic shelter. So then one year later, I took that same two by two structure and used shower curtains to create a 16 foot wide ohm dome. And this was used by a friend of mine that meditated. And again, it's all the same material, the same mechanism. Yeah. Here we have the rectangular one-tenth of the decagon. So this is gonna become a piece of my cylinder. And this rectangle here is one of those surfaces where like the word life pod is written on a rectangle. And then we have a 10-sided shape inside of a 10-sided shape. What you have here is a 10-sided cylinder inside of a 10-sided cylinder. So there's a thing called the Da Vinci Bridge. We end up creating a space truss because this is a two by two here and here, and then we have a two by two right in the middle of those offset by one length. And it gives you a space truss across the whole length for supporting the skin, which is uh, only a quarter inch Luon. I used actually cardboard, six pieces of a cardboard laminated together to provide a skin on top of those two by twos. So all that is is cardboard laminated to the quarter inch Luon. And all this time I was worried about how I was going to attach a flat skin and transfer from this cylinder to the dome. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the life pod, you'll see I kind of use this arc shaped, almost like what you would see a base of a leaf around the petal of a flower to transfer from a flat surface to a curved surface. So I let nature inform me on how to attach that. So this is really strong. It's all put together with waterproof deck screws. So that, that's much more reliable than nails. So it's almost screwed and glued at every interconnection. It's all just kind of like a unibody. So this is actually the, the workbench leaf, one of three leaves that create the, the bed surface. So basically you have half of a full-size mattress. I wanted more than a twin because sometimes there's a couple of people and a twin is pretty small. So there's three wooden leaves that attach here. 
Now, I tried to keep this simple by using common stuff. So this is one of the three surfaces. And if I had a chair. Okay. Sure. So if I was designing my next life pod, I could be sitting right here with my cup of coffee and have my coffee maker over there <laughs> and go to work and look out the window and see what's going on. So you just used, you know, tubing for support. Uh, so this is PVC four inch tubing. Uh, so it's standard stuff and it's the thin tubing. So these are only about $8 for a, a 10 foot section. So it saved a lot of time instead of creating bracketry and all that stuff. And it's strong, it works. Oh yeah, it, it'll handle, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. That's the second one. If I put the other two in, then I'd have a whole foundation for the full-size bed. Okay. And this is what happens. See, two by fours, they start to get heavy very fast. This is all still two by two construction. There's the third leg. Excellent. Not, honey, yeah. can you grab or the twin air mattress from the living room? And Too much trouble. So yeah. I think so. I think yeah. it's fine. So, you know, there's enough room to stretch out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> Thank you. Would you ever make this more sort of automated, you oh. know, change, you know, to make it easier somehow? Certainly. Now, this is really the prototype. So the reason why we made this was to get time with it and feedback from other people to see did this do what we had hoped it would do does it take too much effort to do those common things that we needed to do so you know now we're back to couch mode and if we wanted to you know we got enough room to with a couple more pillows to hang out and do some computing or whatever this is only 100 square feet and really this was a proof of a principle where I'm saying, oh no, you can do more with even less. But the world hasn't gone as far as they could have yet with the materials and the process and the technology. So let's use some of what Buckminster Fuller was talking about in the 50s and 60s and 70s when there was really not yet a recognized need for it and let's apply that to today's problems, which are bigger than ever. Cost-wise, you're looking at to build a living structure in your driveway for less than $10,000. You know, now you can go out and buy a recreational vehicle like a pop-up camper but why not take 12 weeks to rediscover your family and friends and make something with your own hands? There's a word, architecton. It's an ancient Greek term. It means builder. The first architects were simply builders. There weren't architecture schools, but those who built dwellings existed since man existed. 